right there. Good morning. I'd like to welcome everybody out to First Baptist Church of Manville this morning. Glad everybody's made their way out. Here with us this morning, both both in person and online. I'm going to try to jump right into these announcements here and move along real quick here and get out of the way for the service. If you had your bulletin, you'd like to follow along with me. You'll see the first thing on the announcements is the July Backpack Ministry. We're collecting those items, and you can see there some of the things um, that we're collecting in the collection boxes are back in the vestibule. And then the, the deacons of the month for the month of uh June is Rick, and for the month of July is Matt, and their phone numbers are right there if you need to get in contact with them. And then on July the 3rd, the youth will be going to New Tazewell Pool. Come by any time, 6 to 8. Hannah, do you need to say anything about that? No, just come by, 6 to 8. I think we've got the whole place rented. Um, and then we need three more volunteers for the Bible release time starting this fall. The sign-up sheet is back in the vestibule. And then the backpack ministry will be coming up on Wednesday, July the 20th at 7 p.m. And the giveaway is Monday, July the 25th from 5 to 7. So I'm going to say that again. Wednesday, July the 20th, and then the giveaway is July the 25th from 5 to 7. I'm assuming that Wednesday night we'll be packing those backpacks. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. I will make sure I got that right. And then there's a list of things there. If anybody would like to donate for the mission trip, uh, Zoe's going on a mission trip and Kyle's granddaughter's going on a mission trip. There's several of them that's going that we've got connections with. If anybody would like to donate anything, you can give that to Zoe or to Allison. And if you'd like to receive an email about that, there's a sign-up sheet back in the back about what's going on. There's Leah. Leah's going, so I'm sorry. I didn't even recognize you. I didn't even see you, Leah. And that email, let me say this. The girls may not think of it. If I overlooked any announcements this morning, I know I've went through them kind of quick, but I just want to kind of get through them and give Corey as much time as possible. Corey, I, uh, Jesse, I would like to say that we received a, a donation from a lady that um, received some of our random acts of kindness, and I just wanted to read the card there, the, the insert that was with it. It said, thank you for the $5 and invite to your Bible school that you gave out at McDonald's. Please accept this donation for your expenses, and she sent $100. So I just wanted to share that. Is there anything else this morning? Nothing? If not, I'll jump right into prayer requests before we have a time of prayer this morning. Is there any special prayer requests we need to make mention of? We've got a lot on our prayer list right there, uh, but is there any that uh, we need to make a special prayer request for this morning? She's in the hospital again. So remember, it's Anything else this morning? Nothing? If not, Lord, will you lead us this morning in prayer? Lord, we thank you, Father, for today. We thank you, Lord, for just the opportunity to be able to come to be in your house. Lord, it certainly is a privilege. We thank you for health and strength just to be able to get here, Lord, and means. And Father, we pray that you would bless the service today. We ask that you would be with Lana, Lord, as she leads the choir, Father, and leads us in music. We pray that, God, you would bless this time. God, bless those that are going to sing and play special this morning as well. And, God, we ask and we pray, Father, for the preaching of your word, that, Lord, you would say, Lord, everything that, Lord, you won't say here this morning. And we pray most of all today, Lord, that if there is someone here that is lost or, Lord, that are watching online that's lost and does not know you as their Savior, please, Lord, we ask that you would give them that opportunity, Father, to call on your name and be saved. We thank you, Lord, that you are the God, that, Lord, you're still restoring hearts and you're still restoring lives. And God, you can still make a change and a difference. And, God, we thank you for that. And all this we ask in your name. Amen. Was there any birthdays this past week? 
You'll get your church hymnal. We're going to sing 133.
this morning and do appreciate everybody that's come out to be with us and worship the Lord this morning and uh, we encourage you just to mind the good Holy Spirit of God today amen and uh, we're going to uh, look here just for a few minutes uh, on our Sunday school and our spotlight our teacher and our class uh, for this week and next week is uh, Matt and Sabrina Taylor and uh, they are the teachers of our uh, young adult class and uh, we're just in continuing to encourage everybody that can and will come be a part of our Sunday school. Uh, we have wonderful teachers and we have classes for all ages and uh, we just would love for you to come be with us. It starts at 10 o'clock every Sunday morning. It is a wonderful way to grow as an individual uh, in God's Word and in your walk and in your relationship with the Lord, but it's also a wonderful opportunity to grow together as brothers and sisters in Christ and to learn from each other. And, uh, and not only that, but uh, Sunday school is a wonderful opportunity uh, to invite someone that you know of that uh, does not come to church or they're not in church and uh, just a great opportunity to invite them to come be a part of a small group uh, to be able to learn about the Lord and to grow more in His Word. So I'm going to ask Matt Taylor if he would for just to come for just a few minutes and speak and share just a little bit uh, about their class. So you pray for Matt as he comes this morning. I don't really have to say anything because, Corey, I mean, how can you follow that? I mean, that's exactly what, what we come to Sunday school for. Uh, no, we uh, we started, Sabrina and I started this class. They asked to start in uh, January of this year, and we hesitated about it, you know, and thought, no, nah, I don't know if we want to do it or not. I did. I don't know about Sabrina. She's not here today. She didn't feel good. But, um, you know, we got in there and started, and it's been a, it's been a blessing. It's been a joy. Um, you know, I think I've told you, all before but you know I am a preacher's kid and uh, Sunday school is a vital part of church um, I've learned more of this past six months just getting into these and studying and knowing than I probably did my whole time going as a preacher's kid because I didn't really care I did care but I didn't really care I thought I don't have to, do, I don't, you know, I don't have to go, I don't want to do it, you know, because my dad's making me go, you know, but I got in there, we get in there, we study this, and there's a lot of stuff that you can really learn out of Sunday school, you know, I'll invite you to come to our class, you know, um, the kid, the, we got the Walton League uh, kids that come, and, you know, that's the most I've heard them talk in the past six months teaching this class than I have the whole time they've been here, you know. But they've got good parents. They've got, you know, their parents have raised them right. And, uh, you know, they're, they're there. Um, you know, I'll invite you to come to our, our class. If not, like Corey said, there's a lot of good teachers that teach Sunday school that you can go to their class and you'll learn just as much from them as you probably more than you would from us you know because like I said we're learning we're learning and I'm learning more and more each lesson we do you know um, other than that I, you know more than welcome to come to our class if not the main thing is come to Sunday school you know just come to Sunday school I mean we, we don't do it on the screens so you need to be here you know be here and you'll learn. I promise you that. Thank you.
there's much to do here before you leave so go tell the world about me i was dead but now i Man, that's certainly what our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ has commissioned us to do, and uh, that is to go and tell the world about Him. Amen. Uh, that's exactly what He told His disciples to do. If you look in uh, the last couple of uh, last chapter, the couple of the Gospels, there He told them. He said for uh, to go and to share the gospel. He told them. He said, "Listen, I'll be with you always, even until the very end." And uh, I'm glad that we serve a God this morning that will never leave us and he'll never forsake us. Uh, but he goes with us all the way to the very end, and I thank God for that. If you have your Bibles this morning, we are going to begin reading in Ezra chapter number 10. And uh, we're going to start with verse number 1. Uh, we have come to the very last chapter of the book of Ezra, and we've been going through this book uh, along with the book of Zechariah and Haggai for quite some time now. And uh, we looked at Wednesday night, and this is kind of a, a continuation of Wednesday night and uh, what we studied in chapter number 9 in the book of Ezra. And uh, we, we looked at that on Wednesday, and, uh, and we're going to look at chapter 10 there here this morning. Uh, but before we get started, just kind of to recap on what we've learned just in this book uh, here in Ezra and uh, what we've looked at. We've seen in uh, God's Word in the book of Ezra alone, we've seen God's grace, we've seen God's mercy. Uh, not only His grace and mercy, but we've seen that grace and that mercy upon His own people uh, during the bondage and the captivity that they were in in Babylon. Uh, we know that they were captured uh, by the Babylonians, they were carried away back as captive, as slaves in bondage. Uh, we know that history and the Bible teaches us that while they were in the captivity there at Babylon, we know that the Meds and the Persians uh, come up, they overtook the Babylonians, so they continued in that captivity there under uh, the leadership of the Med and the Persians. We know that the chapter number one of the book of Ezra, we know that Cyrus was the king of Persia. And Cyrus was the king that God had stirred in his heart uh, to grant release to uh, Zerubbabel and some of those to go back uh, to Jerusalem and to build and restore the house of God in the city. And that was where the book of Ezra picked up. We know that. Uh, we know that those people, the people were given opportunity to return to their homeland. Uh, we know that 70 years later they were given that opportunity to return after they were taken away into captivity and into bondage. 
We know that from the Bible teaches us in the book of Chronicles that the people were carried away captive. They were carried away in chains. Uh, they were carried away as slaves, as servants. And as they were carried away and as they were being led out of Jerusalem back to Babylon, they looked and the last that they saw of their beloved city their beloved city was on fire. Their temple was on fire. The city itself was in ruins. Uh, the, the city was, uh, there was destruction all around as they were carried away into Babylonian captivity. Uh, but we know that from the book of Ezra, we began to study and we read that the first 42,360 people, and that was mostly led by, uh, made up of the Levites and the servants of the house of the Lord, uh, that God had set aside, those were the ones that were able to leave and to go back to Jerusalem under the leadership of Zerubbabel. Uh, we know that they were led back, and when they got there, uh, we know that the first thing that they did before they ever started the construction or the foundation to the house of the Lord, the very first thing they did was they restored the altar. They built an altar and they restored the altar. And what that did was this. They began to align their hearts. They began to align their life. They began to align their priorities. They began to align themselves with the will of Almighty God. Amen? You see, the very first thing that the people had to do was they had to get their lives and their heart and everything about them in line spiritually with the Lord. They had to be restored spiritually before they could work and start physically restoring the temple and building the house of worship and the house of God. You see, that's the way it is today still. You and I that have been saved by the grace of God, before we can really begin to do any kind of work uh, for the Lord, physical work for the Lord, listen, my friend, we need to be where God would have and want us to be spiritually. Amen? Our hearts and our lives have got to be in line with the Almighty God. Our hearts and our lives, we have to be spiritually ready. We've got to be spiritually right to be able to be ready to work and to serve the Lord and to be led by the Holy Spirit as God would have us be. Amen? They had to get right and prepared first before they could start working on the house of the Lord. We know that the altar was built. Their lives, they were in line with the Lord. Their priorities were in line with God's. We know that the foundation of the temple then, not long after, was, it was laid. We know that just by the foundation of the temple that was laid, we read that the Bible said that the people began to shout they begin to worship. They begin to praise the Lord just for the foundation. And those old men and women that were there that were carried away in bondage and captivity 70 years late, uh, before, my friend, they never thought they would see the temple of the house of the Lord ever restored. Their last memory, their last thought, the last thing they seen was the temple was on fire and it was in ruin. But my friend, they got to look and they worship God. They praise God before the foundation was laid. They begin to worship God for what He allowed them to see. You see, God was restoring His house of worship. God was restoring his people Israel. We know that once it was built that we know that, uh, that during that time that God's people were faced with opposition. Their enemies and the work on the building of the house of God it was hindered due to the enemies of God and the enemies of the people. Listen, you and I today that have been saved by God's grace, when we go and we begin to work and we serve the Lord and we do things for God, our work sometimes can be hindered by the enemy. And we learned as we studied through this book that when our work is hindered for the Lord, we must keep on doing what God has saved and called us to do. We must continue to be faithful. We must continue to be steadfast. We must continue to stay close to 
the Lord. Amen? We know that the building was hindered, but we also have learned just from chapter number 9 that Ezra began to lead back the second group of exiles back to Jerusalem and back to the homeland. We know that when they got back, time had passed, and the people of Israel, there were some things that had happened during the time. As we read Wednesday night, we studied in chapter number 9, we find that Ezra found that the people had intermarried. They had married the Canaanites, they had married to the Hittites, they had married to the Amorites, the Ammonites. They had married to pagan spouses. They had gave their daughters away to marry. They had gave their sons away to marry. And what we find, and we study God's Word, according to God's Word, and you'll find in the book of Deuteronomy, that this was forbidden by the Lord. And it had nothing to do with uh, a racist or a prejudice thing that God had. It had nothing at all to do with that. But it was strictly a spiritual matter. And the reason why that God did not want His chosen people to intermarry with the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Ammonites and all those different types of tribes of people and, and nations and, and cultures will cause they were considered to be a pagan nation. And each one of those nations, each one of those different types of people, they served and worshipped false gods and false idols. And God was trying to keep His children from a lot of heartache and a lot of, of hurt and a lot of things that would happen to them and come down the road in the future. So God said, listen, don't marry into these people. Why? Because God knew that as soon as they would intermarry that the spouse of that foreign or false god or idol, that they would influence that child of God's of Israel to begin to worship and serve and worship a false god and false idol. God knew that they would be carried away and that they would no longer serve and worship Him. And we've seen this down through the Scripture and down through history. This is what happened, and this is where we are at. So Ezra saw for the salvation and to preserve uh, the nation of Israel that God wanted those people to get it right. And my friend, that they had to make some tough choices. They had to make some tough decisions. Uh, but they had to do what God had commanded them and what He wanted them to do according to His Word and according to the law. So Ezra stood up and he preached and he told these people according to God's word that they had sinned against the law and the word of God by giving in and marrying in to these other types of people. And God saw, and or Ezra saw, what had happened. When you begin to study a little bit about this, you're going to find that the southern kingdom, or I'm sorry, the northern kingdom, Ezra had saw this, that in the northern kingdom of Israel, that the exiles that were there that are part of that northern kingdom of Israel, they had lost both their spiritual and physical identity through intermarriage. Why? Because their pagan spouses had caused the people to worship idols. And Ezra did not want this to happen to the exiles that were left that were a part of the southern kingdom of Israel. Ezra understood that this was very, very important. So here's what we're going to find this morning. We're going to read verse number 1. The Bible starts out like this. It says, Now when Ezra had prayed, and when he had confessed, weeping and casting himself down before the house of God, there assembled unto him out of Israel a very great congregation of men and women and children. For the people wept very sore. And Shekinah, Shekinah the son of Jehoi, Jeel, one of the sons of Elam, answered and said unto Ezra, We have trespassed against our God and have taken strange wives of the people of the land. Yet now there is hope in Israel concerning this thing. I want to stop right there for just a minute. 
These people had recognized, they understood, as Ezra, the Bible said, Ezra had prayed and he confessed, weeping and casting himself down before the house of God. Number one, Ezra showed his leadership. You see, Ezra was the leader. And Ezra put himself, he understood. Ezra was tore up. He was hurt. He was, he, he could begin to confess. He began to, he began to confess and pray and himself weeping and crying. And he cast himself down before the house of God. Ezra did this as an example, as a leadership example. He himself understood the seriousness. He understood the trespass. He understood the transgression. He understood the sin that was committed against the Lord. And Ezra understood that this was a serious matter. And Ezra was repentful. He wanted to repent. He wanted to return of this. And he wanted to get back to the ways of God. And he wanted the people to get back to the ways of God. He understood the importance of leadership. He understood how important that it was being an example of that leadership to the people. And here's what he said. Of course, they assembled themselves uh, unto him out of Israel, a very great congregation of men and women and children. For the people wept sore. The people themselves, they began to weep. And it said, and they got down there and said, For we have trespassed against our God. They realized, they understood what they had done, they understood their sin. And it said, They have taken strange wives of the people of the land, yet now there is hope in Israel concerning this thing. I think that right there was very important. Listen, my friend, there was hope, and the people understood. They realized that there was still hope in Israel, even concerning this matter. Listen, my friend, we're going to get to the message here in just a minute. Bear with me. But listen, my friend, when we sin and when we transgress and when we disobey the Word of God and we, my friend, go in a different direction and we go against the will and we go against the way of Almighty God, listen, my friend, I'll say this morning, there is still hope. For you and I, amen? There is still hope in the midst of our sin. There is still hope in our disobedience. There is still hope in our transgression. There is still hope in our trespass. My friend, why? Because God in His grace and His mercy sent His only Son, Jesus, to die on the cross of Calvary for you and I. And just as these people, as they begin to confess, as they begin to repent, as they were sorrowful for what they had done for their sin, you and I, my friend, it still takes the same way today being, my friend, repenting and turning from that sin and asking God to forgive us and cleanse us, my friend, from all that unrighteousness. You see, confession before an almighty God is the first step to repentance this morning. And when there's repentance and confession, there's hope for you and I. And that hope this morning can only be found in Almighty God. As we read right here, it says this. Not only is there hope in Israel concerning this thing, verse 3 says, Now therefore let us make a covenant with our God to put away all the wives and such as are born of them according to the counsel of my Lord and of those that tremble at the commandment of our God. And let it be done according to the law. Arise, for this matter belongeth unto thee. We also will be with thee. Be of good courage and do it. You think about that for just a minute this morning. What Ezra and what, what these people were being asked to do, man, that was pretty strong, wasn't it? It's pretty hard. These men and these women that had given in and intermarried to different people, Ezra was saying, listen, you need to put away those wives and those husbands that you've intermarried. He said, because of this thing, he was asking a very strong thing, a very hard thing. But you see, there was more to it than this. You see, the people, Ezra wanted the people to separate themselves from the pagan nations for the spiritual future of Israel. He understood that there was more at stake here. You see, when you've been to read and study this, it goes on to say this. Verse number 5 says, Then arose Ezra and made the chief priests and Levites and all Israel swear that they should do according to this word. You see, the thing about it was, it wasn't just the people of Israel. 
But the priest and the Levites had done this thing as well. He went on to say, verse 6, Then Ezra rose up from before the house of God and went to the chamber of Johanna, the son of Elisha. And when he came to the house of God, or when he came thither, he did eat no bread nor drink water, for he mourned because of the transgression of them that had been carried away. And they made proclamation through Judah and Jerusalem and to all the children of captivity that they should gather themselves together into Jerusalem and that whosoever would not come within three days according to the counsel of the princes and the elders, all his substance should be forfeited and himself separated from the congregation of those that have been carried away. When you begin to study this, you'll find that the one that, when it said to forfeit one's substance, meant to be disinherited. And what that means is, is to lose one's legal right to own the land. And the reason for this was, was to ensure that no pagan children would inherit Israel's land. In addition, the person who refused to come to Jerusalem would be separated from the congregation, excluded from the assembly, and not allowed to worship in the temple. This was considered one of the most horrible punishments that the people of Israel could go through. This was horrible. But we read on, we're going to find... And there's a, there's, a, there's a good ending to this, I promise you, okay? Verse number 9 said, Then all the men of Judah and Benjamin gathered themselves together in Jerusalem within three days. It was the ninth month on the twentieth day of the month, and all the people sat in the street of the house of God trembling because of this matter. These people were scared to death. These people were concerned. They were worried. They were trembling. Why? Because of the Almighty God. Because of the Word of God. They were getting ready to have to do something that they didn't really want to do or want to do or go forward and do it. But they knew that they had to according to God's Word. And it went on to say this, And for the great rain, and Ezra and the priest stood up and said unto them, You have transgressed and have taken strange wives to increase the trespass of Israel. Now therefore make confession unto the Lord God of your fathers and do his pleasure and separate yourselves from the people of the land and from the strange wives. Then all the congregation answered and said with a loud voice as thou hast said so must we do. But the people are many and it is the time of much rain and we are not able to stand without. Neither is this a work of one day or two for we are many and have transgressed in this thing now let our rulers of all the congregation stand and let them all them which have taken strange wives in our cities come to an appointed time and with them elders of every city and judges thereof and to the fierce wrath of our God for this matter be turned from us. When you begin to go through here and read the rest of this, here's where we're getting to this morning. These people had sinned and transgressed but their was hope for their sin just as it is for you and I today there's hope you may be sitting here this morning and maybe you may be here and you may have gone away from the will and the word of God and you may have got away for several years and you've gone far 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 away from what God has wanted you to do maybe the way you've been living your life is not in accordance to God's word maybe you have intermarried with other things of this world maybe you've gave your heart and you've gave your life to sin and to things that this world has to offer I want to tell you something this morning it doesn't matter how far you've gone it doesn't matter how far how many years you've been away from the Lord and from a relationship with the Lord and living your life according to God's Word and God's standard and being led by the Holy Spirit. Listen, my friend, there is grace. There is mercy. There is forgiveness for you this morning. And all it takes is it starts with confession. It starts with confessing your sin, your faults, your failures, the way you've been living your life before a holy and almighty God and asking God this morning to cleanse you and to forgive you from all your sin and all your unrighteousness. The Bible teaches us and tells us in the book of 1 John, it says this, For God is faithful and just to cleanse us and to forgive us and to wash away all of our sin and all of our unrighteousness if we will confess our faults 
before Him. He will do that this morning. It starts with confession. It starts with talking and praying and asking God to forgive you and cleanse you from your sin. You see, these people gave us a great example this morning. Ezra gave them God's Word, number one. And what God's Word does is it shows us our sin, doesn't it? God's Word is the standard. And God's Word shows us where we've come short and where we've failed. Just as these people had come short, they disobeyed the Word of God. And God said, all right, Ezra, we need to make things right. And they had to make it right before an almighty God. Listen, we've all committed sin and we've all failed. We've all come short. And God's Word gives us the standard and God's Word says, All right, Corey, you need to make it right. Corey, you need to get it right. According to the Word of God. And what do we do? We go before the Lord and we pray and we confess and we ask God to cleanse and forgive us and wash away that sin and my friend just as these people they were weeping why because they were sorrowful they they were truly remorse they were repenting for their sin and for their wrong and their transgression and their trespasses against an almighty God and they wanted things to be right before God the Father listen my friend as a child of God we want things to be right between us and God don't we we want that clear we want that clear conduit we want that conscience to be clear we want my friend our heart to be right with the Lord we want to live according to God's word and if there's sin in our heart and there's sin in our life we've got to pray and ask God for that forgiveness and that grace and when we do that he is faithful to forgive us of that and cleanse us and restore us you see here's the happy ending to this as they said in Ezra 10 verse 2 he said there is hope in Israel concerning this thing the people admitted their sin to God They ask for direction in restoring their relationship to God. Number one this morning, we've got to admit our sin, don't we? God, admit your sin before God. And once we do that, and we ask for that forgiveness, God forgives us. He's faithful to do that. Number two, they ask for direction in restoring their relationship to God. You see, once God forgives us of our sin... We, in return, need to be praying and saying, Lord, give me direction. God, show me where I need to be and what I need to be doing. God, give me direction. Help me to walk in your ways according to your Holy Spirit day in and day out. God, help me restore me and restore my relationship with you. I'm glad we serve a God this morning of restoration, aren't you? God will restore our relationship with Him. Number three, true repentance leads to a corrective behavior and a changed attitude. Amen? Listen, when you truly repent and turn away from your sin, and God truly makes a change and a difference in your heart, your behavior will change. And your attitude will be different, and it will change as well. You see, we find here that God's forgiveness is great through our confession of our sin to Him. Amen? There is no greater display of forgiveness and love and grace and mercy of God when, my friend, we confess our sin before Him and He shares and shows that compassion and that love and that grace and that mercy to us when we confess. You know, the Bible teaches us right here that some of these men in chapter 10, verse 18 that what they did was they offered a ram of the flock for their trespass, for their sin. I want to share something with you. There was a lamb that was offered over 2,000 years ago for you and I. There was a lamb that was offered for our trespass, for our transgression, for our disobedience. My friend, he was offered on the cross, and he died for the sin of the whole world. All you and I have got to do is trust in that death and that burial and that resurrection. 
and trust in the blood that he shed, knowing that over 2,000 years ago, still today, it is still as powerful and is able to wash away the sin of the world. And my friend, cleanse and change the most vile and wretched sinner. The good thing about it this morning in closing is this. God is able to restore and build lives. Amen. When you look at this book of Ezra from start to finish, and we're closing. The book of Ezra opens with God's temple in ruins and the people of Judah captive in Babylon. Ezra tells of the return of God's people, the rebuilding of the temple, and the restoration of the sacrificial worship system that Moses had set up, that God set up under Moses. We know that God is able to restore and rebuild the lives of people today, isn't he? He is. God is able to build and restore lives of each and every one of us today. No one is so far away from God that he or she can not be restored by the Almighty. I'm thankful this morning it doesn't matter where you've been or how far you've been or how far you've gone. God's still able to make a difference in your life. God's still able to restore you, forgive you, and cleanse you and make a change and difference. I'm thankful this morning that we serve a God that's in the restoration business. Just as he restored the temple, you read Nehemiah, he's going to restore the gates, and he's going to restore the city. But right here at Ezra, we found that he restored the temple. And he restored the house of worship. But not only that, he restored the people. Spiritually. My friend, that's where it begins this morning. It's for you and I as individuals spiritually this morning to be restored and in the right path and in the right way with our God today. And when we're where we need to be with the Lord and we've been restored spiritually and forgiven and cleansed and man, we're right and we're in the will of God. Man, the worship between us and the Lord, it'll be restored as well. Amen? That's exactly what happened here in this book. I have enjoyed the book of Ezra. I've enjoyed the book of Haggai. I've enjoyed the book of Zechariah. And I tell you what, just as it was so relevant for them back in that day, it has been so relevant, relevant for us in the day and the time that we're living in. Because we're living in a day and we're living in a world that it is so important that we don't give ourselves away to this and to that and whatever this world has to offer. But man, we've got to keep our lives and our hearts clean and right before the Lord. Amen. And it's so important that we stay in fellowship with Almighty God. Serving, worshiping, praying, reading, studying, growing, doing what God has called and saved us to do. Amen. Let's pray this morning as they come get a song. As everybody would, let's stand to our feet today. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this morning. We thank you for your word. Father, we know and we've read that, Father, Lord, is how these people had intermarried. They'd given into marriage that, Father, you were not, Lord, you were not, it was not pleasing to you, Lord. It was disobedience, Father. It was not right in your eyes. Father, there was still hope for these people to be restored, and you did that. Father, so many of us here this morning, Father, there's times in our life and there's probably going to be times in the future, Lord, of our lives that, God, we're going to give ourselves away to things of this world. Lord, we ask and we pray that, Father, Lord, that you would help us, restore us. God, bring us back to the place that, Lord, we need to be, Father, with you. And, Lord, bring us back to a place of, of repentance. Lord, when you show us in your word where we've sinned and where we're wrong, Father, help us to have a repentant heart. Help us to have a heart that we would come and repent and confess our sins and faults before you. And Lord, knowing when we do that, God, you're faithful and just, and you forgive us of those. God, you restore us. You help us, Lord. You give us direction. God, you restore our walk and relationship with you. God, you take us and use us to begin to serve you, 
to worship you and to live for you and to do what we're supposed to do, and that to be a light, a light and a witness to a lost and dying world. God, we love you so much, and we ask this morning that, Father, if there is someone here today that, Lord, their lives need to be restored, they've not been where they need to be with you, Lord. They've not been living a life of obedience and according to your word. But, God, you've been dealing with their heart. You've been speaking to their heart. Won't they come this morning, Father, and repent? Lord, be restored and, and forgiven by you, Lord. We love you. We thank you. And all this we ask in your name. Amen. As we sing this morning, if you feel the need to come and pray, this altar is open. We encourage you to mind the Lord at the cross this morning. What a wonderful invitation hymn as they sing, Mind Him Today. You know, we serve a God, as the Bible teaches us and tells us, that the God we serve, He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He's not changed, has He? He's still the same God that we serve. The people that change, we, we change. We change from day to day. We change from year to year. We change from decade to decade, to century. There's been a lot of change in people and in mankind over the years. But God has been the one steadfast, sure thing that has not changed. God's Word is just as sure and it's just as real and it's just as the standard as it was back then, it is today. And I'm thankful this morning that God's Word, it corrects us, don't it? It teaches us, it shows us the path we need to be on. And uh, I am so thankful for God's Word. I, I still believe with all my heart God's Word this morning is the standard that we ought to try each and every day to live our life according to. And uh, I'm so thankful for God's Word. Thankful for His grace and His mercy. You know, we serve a gracious, merciful, loving, heavenly Father today. But we also serve a jealous God that loves His people. And He wants His people to serve Him, worship Him, and live for Him. To be that light, to be that witness for him each and every day. And I'm thankful uh, for God's grace this morning. It has certainly been good to be in God's house today. I have enjoyed all the singing. Uh, I've enjoyed the time of service and worship that we've been able to have here in God's house this morning. 
And if you're visiting with us today, we hope and pray that we've made you feel at home, made you feel welcome. Uh, we would love for you, if you would, for just a few minutes, if you would, in your bulletin, look. There is a guest card in the bulletin. And if you would, take just a few minutes and fill that out. And you can tear it off in the bu uh, your bulletin and you can place that in the offering plate on your way out the door this morning. We'd love for you to come back, be with us again, and join us again uh, for service. Uh, Lord willing, don't, uh, don't forget the uh, announcements that uh, Brother Jesse made this morning. Uh, we'll be back, Lord willing, on Wednesday night for uh, prayer meeting and Bible study at 7. Our youth and our children will be having their classes as well, so be much in prayer for that. Remember that upcoming. All the announcements, all the, uh, the, the sh things for the backpack ministry that's coming up, uh, all the items there that they're taking up, there is a box in the back, so feel free to bring those in, drop those off. Please continue to pray for Zoe, and remember, pray for Leah as they go on their mission trip to Honduras. Be praying for them. Start praying for them now. Uh, that God would open doors and opportunities up for them to be able to share the gospel while they're there and that God would use them in a mighty way and go ahead and start preparing the hearts of the people there of Honduras uh, for the gospel that they are going to share. So pray for them uh, and remember them in the upcoming days and weeks as uh, they get ready to leave. All right, anybody this morning have a word or a testimony or anything on your heart you feel led to say before we dismiss this morning? Thank the church for the opportunity to go to the aquarium yesterday with my family. They had a wonderful time, and, I, and thank Hannah for taking care of all that. Amen. Amen. Appreciate that. Amen. Sure do. Appreciate Hannah putting that together and getting that lined up. Anybody else? Lord, I'd like to say that I am so proud of our young people that we have in this church, our young adults. We have so much talent, and they use the talent. And I am extremely proud of Hunter that he's going to be teaching at the middle school this year. And he's going to be teaching music. And he is going to be a godly teacher, I feel like. Yes. He's going to be a great example. And Ben is going to be a good example, a great example with his classes this year also. Amen. Amen. Thank the Lord for that. Appreciate that. I'm glad God opens doors and opportunities. God puts his people where he wants them, don't he? And I'm glad of that. Thank the Lord for the opportunities he gives us. Anybody else? Well, it's certainly been good to be in God's house this morning. If you've enjoyed being here and you're saved, say amen. 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 It's been great to be here. I'm going to ask our young men if they'll come at this time and go ahead and get our offering plates ready uh, to receive the morning offering. And as they're coming, we encourage you this morning just to give out of obedience and out of a joyful heart to what God has laid on your heart what he leads you to give today. And uh, we just pray that you'd be obedient in that. God has blessed us, hasn't he? Uh, he's better to us than what we deserve. And uh, I'm so thankful that God does open up the windows of heaven, the storehouses, pours out a blessing on us that we can't even contain. God is so good. He's blessed us. So I do thank the Lord for that. Anybody have a word before we dismiss this morning? Trustees and deacons, they'd like to, just a few minutes. That's great. Okay, Brother Rick, uh, remember that. Trustees and deacons are going to meet just for a few minutes down front here right after service. So if you guys would, stay for just a minute or two. Remember that. All righty. If no one else has anything this morning, I'm going to ask Brother Calvin if he would dismiss us today in prayer. Lord, we thank you for this beautiful day. Lord, we thank you for, for bringing us together in your house. Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you for the message. Lord, thank you for Corey, for his time that, that, that he gives, for his family, Lord. It, it, it takes a lot, Lord. Sometimes we forget, but thank you, Lord, for Corey and his family. Please bless them, Lord. And as we leave here today, Lord, please stop anything that would come between us and you, Lord. Just stop it in this track. Keep us close to you. Lead, guide, and direct. In Jesus' sweet name we pray. Amen.